give me a check one two. One two. Hello. Good. 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 Yeah. Well, welcome to the Athlete Institute in Mono, Ontario. All Canadian week. It is the three-point contest, followed by the slam dunk contest. We got mixed. We got the girls on one side, boys on the other. So I'm Chris McKee, joined with a special guest, Ifosa Oliogu. Appreciate you joining me, man. Great to have me. Great to have me. Of course, Ifosa is going to be playing in the main game tomorrow afternoon. So you opted out of this. You weren't feeling it. Uh, a bit sore right now, so you know I can't do too much. That's it. Keep it simple. Yeah. Long season, right? Yeah, but it's good to support, though. It's good to support. No doubt. So here's what's happening. I'll tell you. The in-house announcer's doing the read. So for the three-point competition, contestants have 60 seconds to attempt 25 shots. Each regular shot is worth one point. Each money ball is worth two points. And then a finally contestants will have an additional shot from both logos. Oh wow, that's a new wrinkle for three points each. So top two boys will go through, top two girls, and then they'll have a shoot off from there. So, ladies first, ladies first, to quote the old rap song. We'll see who's starting off. I don't have the list of who's starting off yet, so I'm waiting for Michelle, who's our in-house MC. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the kick up the three-point shootout. Oh, from Royal Crown. So I got my money on Stella. She's one of my favorite shooters from Royal Crown. She's committed to play at San Jose State. And she's just lethal. So she's getting her money ball set up. So the money ball is the white rack. Yeah. So now we know. So the other blacks, the other racks are black, easy for me to say. And then the white rack is the money ball. So Stella is gonna start in the corner. So Stella 5'10 from Toronto, was part of the All Canadian Futures, as well as the next one's game MVP last year. Shout out to mom Lisa and dad Peter. I saw Peter in the building. Got to know them quite a bit all throughout the year. Let's go. Scroll. Two. Three. Oh. Stella Scroll. Five for five. Oh my goodness. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, her money balls. Oh. Ooh. Oh my goodness. You wanna talk about setting a tempo. Scroll on fire. And she's got a good pace. She's got over 30 seconds to kind of finish what she wants to do. Man. Oh, the chat with Stella earlier. She says, I'm cold. I got to get warm. I don't know if, if I can get warm. I got a shot. She's cooled off a little bit. Usually 15 is good enough to get through on the girls' side. Sixteen. Seventeen. Wow. So Stella Scrow. That's impressive, man. I'm not going to lie, the first five shots is crazy. So five for five on the first rack, and that set the tempo. Unbelievable. Have you been a part of any All-Star games or like that in the U.S.? Any of this no, kind of stuff? No? So, Fosa, you're playing down in Overtime Elite. What is it, the Reapers? Yeah, the City Reapers. So how's that been for you going down there? Um, I would definitely say it was a good experience you know, being a little bit out of my comfort zone. But, I yeah, know, I feel like I definitely adjusted to it in the end. So, you know, I feel like that's definitely going to be good for me in the long run. And so you living in Atlanta then? I have. Yeah. How's the ATL treating you? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, Atlanta's more black and white, whereas Toronto's uh, been mixing everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. So who we got here starting off? This is who I got winning. Spencer Ahrens. This is who I got winning right here. So Spencer out of Sunrise Christian down in Wichita, Kansas. 
fielding a boatload of offers. Got offers from Georgetown, Harvard, Missouri, Nebraska, Ohio, Seton Hall, a bunch of them. He did have a Michigan offer, but with Jawan Howard getting fired last week, who knows what's happening with that, right? So Ifosa likes Spencer on the men's side. I like Ishan Sharma. Got my money on Ishan. I got, I got Spencer or I got Dom. Well, Spencer's looking good. Man, it's so smooth. You know, this is a guy 6'9 that can shoot the six, three, nine, man. 6'9 that can shoot, stretch the floor. Jeez. You know, it's funny, when I saw him as like a 14, 15-year-old, he was playing more of the traditional five. He was playing underneath the hoop. Yeah, he was. Corners. He's got plenty of time. He's got eight seconds left. 20, wow. 22. Oh, 21. Yeah. Oh, 21. Wow. What do you like about his game? Um, I feel like he's very balanced. Like when it comes to getting to the rim, he can even play a little bit of the one too. I feel like even Spencer as well, I've been playing against him for a while now, so it's like seeing his game develop, it's, it's definitely good. Because I remember when I was playing against him in like the eighth grade, like he's the one who's running the one. So I mean. So you know him that long? Yeah, That's I know a lot, of the, a lot of them, like a lot of them for a long time. Like we've been playing against each other since like the fifth grade. So here's Naya Dang Yeesh. Naya out injured, hasn't played for her Fort Erie squad in a while. Naya Dang from all the way from Calgary. Two for three, in and out. So Naya Dang goes 6 3. G6 3? Yeah. Oh my goodness. She's got to hurry up. She's a little too casual getting to the. She might run out of time. So she needs. She's got to hit some money balls here if she wants to have a shot at this. One money ball. Nope. So yeah, she's way too slow. She's not gonna get these next ones up. Three, two, and that's it, yeah. Not gonna count. So Naya Dang, I think she was just too casual yeah. getting around. You've seen Stella, she was sprinting between each rack. Yeah, but maybe she's just trying to take her time, but I think, yeah, no, that was definitely too slow. You wanna, you, you, at worst, you gotta get up all your shots. Yeah. You know, give yourself a chance. Our second shooter for the boys is a six-foot-ten power. So Jovan Milicevic. Committed to the University of New Mexico, Jovan Milicevic. The, the Serbian-Canadian. So he's headed to New Mexico. He's going to play for Richard Patino. All right, Jovan, right there. Just keep it right in the middle. Mountain West, New Mexico. Yeah. So. You had a chat with Jovan before, and he's pretty confident, so. Oh, he started a little bit early. One for three. So just one for five on the first rack. His money ball is dead center. All right, he's heating up. So Jovan. Had a whole bunch of offers. Worry, University of Texas Arlington, New Mexico State, UC Santa Barbara. He's rated as a four star by ESPN, three star by 24 7. Now, keep in mind, the thing that people, I don't, you guys don't realize, you know, all those four star ratings? It's yeah. mostly like university kids who don't know anything about basketball who do those ratings. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm over here thinking it's like scouts. Like, no. I don't know who watched the games, I no. guess. That's why I always like it, take it with a grain of salt. What do they have you rated as? To be honest, like I was up there from a while ago, but I know now I don't even think I'm on certain I'm on certain like draft draft boards or whatever. Yeah? Yeah. For what year? That's 26? 25. 25? Okay. Yeah. I don't think I'm on any lists. Of offers. Where are where are you kinda in that process right now? How many schools um, involved? Definitely, definitely still a couple, but I do still want to keep my recruitment open. You know, I don't want to jump too fast on something and take the bait in a sense. But, yeah, no, definitely just taking my time with it. Um, no rush. Have you got down to like a top 10 or anything like that yet? 
Not really. Not not necessarily, yeah. no, but you know, when the time comes, I feel like I'll be ready. So I feel like that's all that matters. So, you know, how close are you watching March Madness based on the, some of the schools that maybe have reached out to you? Um, well, I mean, I feel like, you know, the schools that have been recruiting me and I've been watching the games, definitely like a good sign. Yeah. So I feel like that's what I'm also looking at. So we got Delaney Gibb all the way from out close to the United States. Delaney's going to go play at BYU. She's rated as a four-star by ESPN as well. She's going to play in the Nike Hoop Summit April 13th in Portland, along with Toby Fournier. So I've seen Delaney, a part of the All-Canadian Week, the past couple years. Remember when she was just a youngster, well, three years ago. So Gibb at 9, 10. So she One more left, get it off. At 11 for Delaney Gibb. So Stella Scro leading right now at 13. Naya Dang with the 12 still in the mix right now. Like I think Olivia Leong is going to be in the conversation here from Crestwood. She can shoot. Olivia headed to Dayton. We'll see her in just a second. So who's up now? Felix, Felix, Felix Caceres from Fort Erie. Felix is headed to Colorado, headed to Boulder. Caceres, two-time All-Canadian, OSBA All-Star last season. His Fort Erie squad went undefeated during OSBA play and then lost in the championship to Royal Crown. What, you know Phoenix, or Felix well? Not, not too much, not too no. much yeah. yeah, headed out to play at Colorado. I was chatting with his parents. I said, you know, when you go down and visit, because of Deion Sanders being the football coach, hotels are going to be a hell of a lot more expensive because everyone wants to go to Boulder, especially to in the yeah. fall during the, the football season. Caceres is a long guard. Please, normally... Well, you can play the one, two, or three at the college level. Yeah, he's like six, seven. He goes six, five, I think. Oh. But he plays. He's got long arms. He plays a little longer than I think his height. You know, he seems taller. All right, let's crack. He's got 14 seconds. So Felix from Montreal got to meet his parents at the OSBA championship. They're in the building. Awesome people. Had a great chat with them. So Felix looking good. Fifteen. Nicely done. What did Jovan have again? Um, I think he had like 11. 11, okay. So Spencer Aarons at 21 leads the boys right now. Stella Scro with 13 leading the girls. That in-house mic is so loud, eh? It's it like, is. It's, you're drowning us out. So appreciate you guys tuning in here on the All-Canadian live stream. Chris McKee with Afosa Oliogu from Overtime Elite. Afosa is playing in the main game tomorrow afternoon. So Alex Ann Bissette from Capitol Courts out of Quebec City. Alex can shoot. She's been an OSBA All-Star past couple of years. So you guys didn't get the chance to see Kelly Olinick from the Toronto Raptors was here having a chat with you guys. What were some of the things Kelly was talking to you guys about? Um, just be, being consistent. You know, he was telling us a bit about his story and how, you know, going into his junior year, I think he broke his shoulder. So like, you know, he was out that whole year. And just the fact of coming back from that, you know, doing what he had to do to get to where he wanted to get to. You know, he was getting recruited late. You know, I feel like, he just put in the work. He did anything he could just to get to the level where he wanted to play. So I think that was very important. So here's Alex Ambassett on her money ball rack. Here we go. Five. Six. So Alex Ambassett all the way from Quebec City with six. You ever been to Quebec City? I have once in my whole life. Beautiful. It was great there. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Like maybe five years ago. 
So before I got into media, I produced concerts all across Canada. So I've done. You, do you know who the Roots are? The band, the the, Root, the Roots. It's like a it's a hip hop band, I've but they heard. have like a it's a live band. I did the Roots in Quebec City for fourteen thousand people. It's pretty good. So Dominic Panjonis, the Wyoming commit. I think I think he's gonna do good. I think he's gonna do good. Dominic out of Polaris Prep from Burlington, Ontario. He's gonna go play for Jeff Linder down in Wyoming. He had offers from Bradley, Drexel, Brown, and Old Dominion. He's rated as a three-star prospect on 24-7. Well, he 0 for 5 on the first rack. That's not a good start. Finally gets one. His money ball rack is dead center. Here's his money ball rack. Oh, he's making up some ground here on the money ball rack. Big time. Well, he was four or five on the money ball. Uh, so he's failed his stroke. He's looking good here, Pantones. Yeah, Dom. He's got to hurry here. He's only got seven seconds to get five shots off. Ah, 18. That's not bad. So right now he's second. So Dominic Panjonis with 18. So he's in second right. So right now, Spencer Aarons, Dominic Panjonis getting through. On the women's side, Stella Scro and Naya Dang Yish. Those, those were my two picks right there, though. Those are my two picks. Well, we've yet to see Ishan Sharma. We were so real okay. From DJ Khaled, Lil Baby in the background. So here's Sarah Hurley. So Sarah, she's from Lincoln Prep out of Pelham, Ontario. She's going to play for Cleveland State down in the Horizon League. She's an OSBA All-Star. Her brother TJ plays at Vermont. Oh, that's her brother. Yeah. I should have known. I definitely should have known. TJ played in the tournament this year. They're winning the American East. I know, maybe she might move, she might win this. She's looking good so far. TJ, TJ's a shooter. So maybe it runs in the family. So Sarah's money ball rack is the, the the left angle three. So she's got another rack dead center, and then she'll go money ball. We talk about an athletic family, you know? Like, yeah. Jeez. All right, here's Sarah's money ball rack. She's got to hit at least one of these money balls. There we go. Two. Oh. So she's tied. Not yet. One behind Stella. She hits one, she'll tie Stella. Last shot. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So she's tied with Stella at 13. So as of right now, Stella Screw, Sarah Hurley are through. And then here's, here's the guy. Here's the top dog, Ishan Sharma, the top Virginia dog. commit, the OSBA MVP. This guy has a lightning quick trigger. He shoots so quick, he could probably get like an extra two racks off in the time some of the other guys do. He's I tell you, Tony Bennett in Virginia could have used him last week already this year, never mind next year. Is Sean quiet, dude? No, no. Oh, uh, I don't know about quiet. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe when you talk to him, it may, yeah. it may seem like that, but I feel like when you know him. So Ishan had a bunch of offers from the Ivy League. I know he visited Yale, but turned that down to head to the ACC. And this guy is just so smooth. So three on the first rack. His money ball rack's dead center. We're stuck on five. So here's his money ball rack. 
important shots here. One, two, three. And three of five on the money ball rack. So he's in good shape. He's got to hurry a bit. He's running a little slow. Fourteen. Oh, he's gonna catch him. He might catch him. Sixteen. He's got ten seconds. He's got to hurry. Oh, Sharma. Oh, last one. Oh. There we go. Nineteen. So that puts him in second. So Ishan is through to the next round as of right now. Ooh. We still got we got Will Riley oh, left Will. on the men's side. So one more. Girls side, we've still got Stella or sorry, Olivia Leong from Crestwood. Olivia's going to Dayton. Just won back to back OSBA championships with Crestwood. Just joining us, Chris McKee with a Fosa Oliogu. Fosa in the game tomorrow afternoon. You looking forward to it? Yeah, no, it's definitely exciting. I feel like when this time of year comes around, it's definitely a good vibe. Like I'm always in a better mood. Good. Yeah, no stress. No stress. You actually get to, you get you get to have fun. You get to have fun when you know with your friends. So it's good. But here's Olivia. She's as good a three-point shooter in game as you'll see in Canada, yet to get one going. Oh for 5. So Olivia's been a part of the national team. Olivia also from out west. Her money ball rack is coming up next. It's the angle. She's got to hurry up. So here's her money ball rack. She's got to hit a couple of these. There's one. And she's, wow, she's going so slow. She's only going to get one shot off. One more. No, that's not going to count. That's, that shouldn't count. I don't think it makes a difference either way, though. Because she's still at 10. She's not going to get through. So on the girls' side, still Stella, Stella Skro leading. Naya Dang Yish after. And on the men's side, Ishan Sharma with 19. Spencer Ahrens with 21. Here's Will Riley coming up. Will plays at the Phelps School in Pennsylvania. Born in Cambridge, Ontario. Raised in Kitchener. Was the Basketball Without Borders MVP during NBA All-Star Week. He's got like 20 plus offers. Kansas State, Alabama, Oregon, Villanova, Arkansas, Illinois, Penn State, a bunch of others already taking a visit to Arizona, who just got knocked out of March Madness by Clemson this weekend. I had the chance to see Clemson when they played in Toronto in November. Oh. So they had Purdue, Clemson, TCU, and Alabama all in Toronto. It was awesome. Here we go. So Will has got to get at least 19. Finally gets one, one for five. Will's money ball rack is dead center. Here's his money ball rack. He's got to make some ways here. There's one. Nope. So just two money balls. He's basically got to hit every single shot, so that's him done. You know, yesterday when I went home, my head was just pounding from the noise in here. You know what I mean? It was so nice when I walked in the gym today and it was like dead quiet. You know? The dunk contest too? 
I don't, See, I got my I'll finger. Go. No, it's not. Yeah. So we got Tristan Beckford, Sean Blake, Jalik Dunkley, Distant, Josiah Francis. Is it Ramogi, Nayagudi, Chris Kumu, and Toby Fournier? I already know who's winning. I got it locked. Josiah Francis. Yep. That's who I, I got my money on. Josiah Francis or I mean, I guess Jaleek. Jaleek's just he's bouncy, so I mean, we, we're, we're going to see him. So I was chatting with Jaleek yesterday, and Jaleek's my guy. I've known Jaleek since he was 13, calling the Orange Bowl games. And he won last year. And he said, he goes, you know, Chris, he's like, he goes, I didn't come to win a dunk contest. He goes, I came to win the MVP of the main game. Yeah. So we'll see what his motivation is. But I mean, Jaleek just rolls out of bed and can do the craziest dunks. So they're tallying up the scores here. So did you ever see the dunk with Daniel Saki from like 2018, where he threw oh, the ball? Oh, when they threw a lot from over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I was, remember that, seeing that clip. That was my favorite. It was so funny. I was up in the booth here, and then everyone starts looking up at me. I'm like, why are they looking at me? And then we're like, oh no way! The guys with the ball up there, and yeah. they didn't practice that at all, because I was here like two hours before game time, and they just did it one time, and it was. So we were just praising you, Josiah, talking about who we think is going to win a dunk contest. That's it. So don't dest me. All right. So then don't, de don't he, dest me. He says once he gets warm. If you lose, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> so, Fosa, where are you from originally? Um, I'm Nigerian. Yeah. And then where would you grow up here? I, I was born here. No, oh, but like, where, where, part, where did you grow up here? Oh, I, I grew up in Markham. Oh, okay. Yeah. Markham, Ontario. Richard Sarah headed to Cleveland State. Averaged 9.1 points per game for Lincoln Prep this year. Started out with the Pelham Panthers. She's an honor roll student. And also plays with Kia Nurse Elite. Here we go. So this is the championship round. It's between Sarah Hurley and Stella Scrooge. So she hit three on the opening rack. Yes. Come on, Sarah. Yeah. I'm sick of this song. <laughs> it's overplayed, you know. Let's go, let's go. So Sarah in the opening round had 13. Both her and Stella were tied. So Sarah's money ball rack didn't go too well. She's got to get one more, I think. One more, Sarah. Let's get it. And there she does, 11. So Sarah goes 11 this time after going 13 the opening round. And Stella Scrooge has been sitting there nice and chill. But I'm excited to see what's happening on the man side too. So Stella started out at Southwest and then transferred over to Royal Crown this past year. And we got Ishan Sharma, so it's Ishan versus Spencer Aarons. Ishan will start things off. So how many shots a day do you take as far as practice? You have a number you gotta hit? Not necessarily. I know I know at overtime they got like a system over there called the Noah. So it's like you basically just turn it on and like it tracks like your arc, like it tracks everything. Oh, wow. Like your shot, like wh how you're missing, if you're missing to the left, if you're missing to the right, like everything. That's crazy. And like they also track how much shots you take. So where are the overtime games broadcast? Um, so I think in the whole season, I think it's like 20 games that they, they broadcast on um, Amazon Prime. Oh, no way. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I want to get down. I want to do some of those games, man. That's it. So here's Sharma. He's at 17 already. Oh my gosh. He did well on his money ball rack, which was dead center. 18. And Sharma, he's got about 10 seconds here. 19. So 19. 20. 21. Oh. So he's stuck on 21. Well, that's what Spencer Aaron's got on the first go. 
So Spencer Aarons has got to go 21 at least again. Shout out to 21 Savage. Anytime I hear 21, it's like that 21, 21. He's coming to Toronto in a couple weeks. Oh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm probably not going to be here for that. Did you get to see any concerts down in Atlanta? No, I haven't even been to a concert in general. Never? No, oh, I, I need to go. You do? I do. Stay out of trouble, though, when you get there. I mean, I feel like we're guys, I'm not going to get in trouble. But. If you could go to one concert, who would you go to? I have a couple. I was supposed to go to the Burner Boy concert. Oh, no way. Nice, yeah. But that didn't happen. We had games. And then um, I will go to, like, SZA, Thames, Drake. Nice. But, yeah. All right, here's Stella Scrow now. Burner Boy was in Toronto a couple weeks ago. Come, my son's friends. Well, my son's oh. 20. He plays university you soccer. Guys, guys, guys. Here's Stella. So Stella started off five for five the first time, just one for five. On this, oh, now she's heating up on her money ball. They're, they're not putting enough on the. There we go. Yeah. That's seven, eight. She's got to get 11 at least to tie Hurley. She's got a little cold. She's got lots of time. She could slow down here. Okay, good. This could tie. There she's tied for the win. For the win! Game time. Stella Scro, your 2024 All Canadian three point champ. 13. 14. She's at. Well, I called it at the beginning, and there's Stella Scrow. Deeper next time. They don't go, they don't have that fear. Where Stella's, if she, if she misses three shots in a row, she she'll shoot, shoot it from even deeper next time. She doesn't have that fear. All right, here's Spencer Aarons. Spencer, originally from Oakville, is a class of 2025, rated as a four star on Rivals. He's got to get the 21, remember, to tie Ishan Sharma. So Spencer's money ball rack dead center again. He's ice cold here. Well, he's got one. He's got to hit money balls. Nope. He's done, he can't do it. Because even if he hits all 10, he's only at 15. So Ishan Sharma is just academic right now. It's already been decided. Ishan Sharma, your 2024 All Canadian three point champ. And there you go. A little anticlimactic to end that, you know? You want to end on the big shot? Yeah. You got any buzzer beaters on your resume? This season, any buzzer beater game winners? Um, I actually do, yeah, I do. I got a, it was off an of inbound lob. And it was an out one because a person ran under me. And you, wait, did you dunk? Yeah. Yeah, nice. So how many teams are in overtime elite? Um, it's eight teams total. Eight teams? Yeah. And do you guys all live kind of like, do they get you separate apartments? How's the living situation down there? Um, so there's three teams out of Atlanta. And like those three teams, like we all stay in the same dorms. Like oh, there's no two different dorms, and like, like even me, for example, I had roommates around the Cold Hearts on the on RWE. Oh no way! So yeah. Who were you living with? Uh, Peyton Marshall, Michael Brown, and Marcy Fonda. So four of you guys. Four of us nice. in one in one little apartment. Nice. And how's are you, how are you adjusted to that? That's a Not, lot of dudes in one room. It is, but I feel like the living the living situation in general is just good. And they got like cafeteria and all that, they're feeding you well. Yeah, no, they feed us good. Good, good. Real good. So how does, cause obviously that's a little different. Are you guys allowed like representation agents and stuff like that in Overtime Elite or no? You are, you're allowed to have yeah. your own agent or whatever, but there's just always like the communication, like you always have to communicate it. So do you have an agent? I do, uh, I don't think I do. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you should know. I should know, but like. So I was an agent in music for 20 years. Okay. So I represented like Grammy winning rappers and Juno winners and stuff like that. 
And I would hope my clients would know who I was. But you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> it's stressful, though, being an agent. I, I, bet, all, I uh, bet, I bet. Well, Ishan Sharma, the Virginia commit. So I was two for two on that. You were. Here we go. So I'm, I'm like over four. <laughs> well, Chris McKee with Afosa Oliogu, if you're just joining us, appreciate you tuning in here on the All Canadian live stream. Don't forget, drop them a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you use. Posting a bunch of great content, all sorts of videos, behind the scenes stuff. You can check me out on Instagram, undrafted underscore FA. I won't be posting too much this weekend, but I, I'm doing a whole bunch of interviews and I'll get it all up over the next week or so once I got a bit more time. What's your what's your IG? People want to follow you. Um, it's just my name. It's Izzy Fosa with two A's. That's about it, though. How many followers are you at now? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you off the back of my head, but I think I might be in like the, the 15Ks. 15Ks, not bad. Was he Toby Fournier? He's at about 55. I mean, she's been dunking since like 12 years old, so yeah. I mean. <laughs> Well, Sharma, unbelievable. It's, like, it's just so quick. You know, and, and this doesn't even do his shot justice. When, to see him coming off a screen and how well he does working around that, he's just an unbelievable spot-up shooter. You know, I've chatted about him. The one thing, Virginia, they play defense. You know, they call them press Virginia, right? They press for 40 minutes straight. So if you ever watch a Virginia game, most of their games are kind of like 54-48. They don't, they, they want to slow everything down. It's just defense, defense, defense. And so we know he can score. He can best score in the country this year. It's can he get his defensive game to where they need it at Virginia. That's going to be the key to his success. What do you think is the best part of your game? Um, I feel like it's my play, like my playmaking, decision making. Um, I feel like that part of my game is okay, a little slept on. Like people think I just you know put my head down, go to the rim, jump, run, dunk, whatever. But I think there's a little bit more. To, there's, there's a lot more than that in my opinion. You know, I always talk about I did the play-by-play -play for Lou Gens Dort senior year of high school here, and Lou was a scorer. Lou would put up 45 at night, and he'd be sitting at halftime. Like, he would just destroy, because he'd already decided early he was going to Arizona State. And he didn't play that much defense, but then that's how he's making his living now. He changed his whole game, and he's like, he's not a scorer now, he's just strictly defense. You want to make, well, I think he's, what, 80, 88 million bucks was his last contract, so he's made over 100 million in his career. You want to make 100 million, play defense. So. Yeah, no, I feel like definitely at the next level, like obviously in high school, you're probably going to be the, you know, the top player, you know, the number one option on your team. But just as well as, you know, when you get to the next level, obviously there's going to be people who can do the exact same things you can do. Exactly. So you have to bring something else to the table. There's Stella Scro getting her award. What did you do to mentally prepare yourself to take over the Stella, yeah, she don't, she don't want to talk, man. <laughs> she just came to get a dog. That's it. So there's your 2024 All-Canadian three-point champs, Stella Scro and Ishan Sharma. So, of course, coming up next will be the dunk competition. We, we started a little late today because we talked about they were they had Kelly Olynyk here doing a little speech for all the all Canadians. I didn't realize Kelly was a Scarborough guy. I thought he was like from BC. That's what I thought too. I found that out today. I'm Scarborough born and raised, so I always show love to my Scarborough guys. But because usually Gonzaga, they get the guys from BC, and you know what yeah. I mean, like. I read that. You've heard from Gonzaga. I saw, I saw an article, yeah. I think I'm planning a visit soon. Oh, yeah? I do want to go down there, yeah. Nice. 
you know, that's a program. It's funny, you know, years ago, Gonzaga used to be the underdog. They were the, you know, the Cinderella. And then over the past five years, ever since they got Jalen Suggs, you know, he was a McDonald's All-American, and then they got Chad Holmgren the next year, and they started to get Hunter Salas, who ended up transferring. They started to get all these McDonald's All-Americans. And so they're getting those elite guys. I mean, Mark Few is as good a coach as there is in the country, you know? So what are you, you're a 2025? 2025, yeah. So you got another year of overtime elite? Another year. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's to go back over there, but I'm just trying to see, see my options up. and see yeah. what I'm going to do, yeah. So I know it's five, are you, is it five visits a year you can do, or five visits total? No, so they changed that rule. That was a rule like maybe a year ago or maybe two years ago, okay. whereas now it's just unlimited. Oh, you can take as many visits as you as want? As many as you want, yeah. Oh, bro, I'd take like 25 visits if I was you. Yeah, or I feel like um, as well as, um, what is it? You can't go to the same school though. So like for you example, you can't do it twice. You can't go. You can't go to the same school twice. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, you go see it once. That's it, right? It's yeah. like. So you got Gonzaga in the mix for a visit. Anywhere else you're looking at? Um, eventually, I want to take a visit to Oklahoma as well. Yep. Oklahoma, and then as well as um, Porter, Porter Moiser. What is it? The head coach there. Yeah. yeah. Then after as well as Alabama. In Alabama, yeah. yeah. I know Nate Oates well. So Nate used to be the head coach at Buffalo, and I used to interview him quite a bit when he was the head coach at Buffalo. And I always used to tell him, you need more Canadians, you need more Canadians. Yeah. And now I got to, well, I reconnected with Nate when he was here in the uh, in November with Bama. I, you know, I was so impressed with them. They're so, they were so big. So like, even though they lost that game to Purdue, I was like, I still think this could be a Final Four team. Just their size. I love that guard, Mark Sears, they got. Oh, yeah. So good, man. Yeah, and Nate just re-signed a contract, so you know he's going to be there. You, you pay attention to that, kind of like the contract status of the coaches, where you're looking at? I mean, not necessarily. I feel like, you know, just social media is so big. So I feel like it'll always like end up popping up, and I'll see it, and I'll be like, oh, like, that's crazy. But then I just go about my day. Yeah. Well, you know Mark Few ain't going anywhere. He's been there for, what, 25 years now? Yeah. So we got about nine minutes left before the men's dunk competition starts. So that's, the one guy I don't know is Ramogi Nayagudi. What do you know about him? Um, he, play, he plays Canada League. He can shoot, very versatile, plays defense. Um, yeah, no, he's pretty explosive. I mean, I didn't know he had a dunk package though, but we're gonna see today. Yes. Yeah, I messaged with him. I reached out to him on Twitter and said, hey, give me a little bit more info about yourself. So he's uh, originally in, from Manitoba, yes. from Winnipeg. So coming up in a sec, you'll see Tristan Beckford, Sean Blake, Jalik Dunkley Distant, Josiah Francis, Ramogi Nayagudi, Chris Kumu, and then Toby Fournier. So I had Jasmine Bosco up doing the game with me yesterday, the girls game, and I said to her, because I know she's good friends with Toby, I said, because Toby's done this two years now, and she's gotten away with kind of basic dunks. Yeah. I said, you can't do that, you gotta bring something else. So hopefully she goes, no, 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 we've been working on some stuff. So apparently Toby's got some, a few bag of tricks here. If I, if I see like a, like, I don't know, like an off the backboard back scratch, or even like a Wendy, like, I don't, yes. I don't know what I'll do, but <laughs> I don't know, I might, I might tweak out a little bit. So Ifosa is the, the second player I've had called a dunk competition with me. The other one was Emmanuel Miller, who just wrapped up his senior season with TCU. Played in the tournament. Emmanuel, originally from Scarborough as well, played at Bill Carruthers in the OSBA, and of course, the older brother of Leonard Miller. So was that G League Unite something you were considering? I mean, I never had that option though, but yeah. I definitely always would see and I'll be like, you know, that's a good, I feel like it's a good program. I I don't know if you saw, but I think they're- They're getting rid of it. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It. Yeah, I didn't know if that was in your, you gotta scratch that off the list now. Yeah. So how does NIL work for Canadians? Because I know it's a little different. Um, If I'm being completely real with you, 
I don't necessarily know. No, no. <laughs> you don't care? Yeah, I just feel like as long as I'm getting to who, like I know those things are involved in, as well and it's important, but you know, I feel like as long as I'm hooping, you know, I'm not worried about everything else. Yeah. I'm just doing my thing. That's a, that's a great at attitude. I love that, you know. Too many kids too focused on that. You know, I talked to a lot of coaches. I've spoken to 100 Division One coaches, and that's the thing. A lot of the question is, you know, they don't ask about your facilities or, you know, your your alumni or who, hey, who do you got to the end? It's about how much, how, what are you paying me? How much are you paying? Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of a, I mean, I get it for some kids. You know, I was, I was listening to John Calipari, the Kentucky head coach, on a radio show this week, and he said, look, he goes, if I if I talk to a kid and he's talking about that nonsense, I'm like, I just kind of scratch him off my list. He goes, look, if you come to Kentucky, he goes, right now, we have guys in the NBA with $4 billion worth of contracts. So if you're worried about some NIL, you know, chump change, if you come to Kentucky, you're gonna get paid, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, don't be worried about that kind of stuff. You're like, you'll get there. And so, yeah, some of the uh, like elite, you know, the high-end Kentuckys, that's, they don't even want to hear you talk about it, you know what I mean? Oh. Chris Kumu blows my mind. This like his hops, like he just rolls out of bed like freakishly athletic. That's what a lot of these people do. I, I used to be able to do that. I can't do that no more. You're getting old, man. Yeah. Getting old. <laughs> like, yeah, that's silly. Yeah. You know, Sean Blake. I haven't seen him do like too many crazy in-game dunks, and I've called a bunch of Sean's games this year. He's just lightning quick, attacks the basket, but I haven't seen those outstanding dunks. No, no, he can do a couple. He has a couple tricks. He's got it in him, yeah. Whereas, like I said, Josiah, I mean, in one game, he had five of the craziest dunks I've ever seen in one game. And there's Toby down the other end. She's, she's got, trying to get a lob. She's got Jasmine Bosco helping her out. You know what would be impressive? If one of these guys pulled out, was it Olivier? And jumped over him? Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's the trick, right? Oh, man. I will tell us story. We did a, a dunk competition. Well, two years ago, we had Mambaro Mara. And he jumped over a 6'11 guy. Yeah, I was there. He jumped over like three of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the one guy was 6'11. The other guy, it went and then it slanted. And so, but yeah, if someone jumps over Olivier Ryu, who's 7'7", seven seven, I'll be impressed. I feel like his head's too close to the rim already. Yeah. Like, that can't even work. So what do you think of him? I, you know, I don't know too much about him because he's playing down at IMG. Yeah. What have you seen from him and just some of the, wor the workouts you guys have had? Um, so me and him played, I think, three years, three years ago. Um, we played U16 um, for the national team. Yep. And yeah, I feel like on that team, he was contributing a whole bunch. Um, yeah, once again, he's like 6'7", so. 7'7". Seven, 7'7". Seven. <laughs> seven, seven. Well, you're like 6'7", aren't you? Yeah. yeah, that's what they told me. Yeah. I, was, I was surprised. But. I know, he's the biggest human I've ever seen. I, I haven't met him, but I stood next to him yesterday and I was like, Jesus. Yeah. But you know what, like, he fills it out. Like, he's proportionate. He's not, like, awkward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's not super skinny. He's not, yeah. like, yeah. The problem is, I think these guys are, it's too long a warm-up because they're going to wear themselves out. So some of the past champs we had in this, we had Daniel Saki, I mentioned, who ended up down at Valparaiso. And then we had Jacoby Neath, who went down to Wake Forest and then Wisconsin. We've had Jalik Dunkley Distant. We had Mambaro Mara. I'm trying to think, I know I'm missing one somewhere in between. Some of the other contestants, we had Tyree Samuel in it. He didn't win it, but Tyree's just finished his senior season down in Florida. He had a great year. We have Quincy Guerriere, who's still at, what, Illinois? Yeah. Olivier Maxson's Prosper was in it a couple of years ago. Oh, Max, where's he, Marquette? Oh, uh, yeah, he was at Marquette. Yeah. He started out at Clemson and then went to Marquette. Now there's Jalik. Did you play against Jalik in the overtime? I did. He came late, he came in January. He came really late. Yeah. 
So what's the season for overtime? When do you guys start? Um, it usually starts in December. Like the first game of the season last year was December 1st. Until March. what, March? Until March 17th. Okay. So you, you've only been home a couple days then? No, no, no. I've been back for more than a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been back for a while. Like right after the finals, I was able to come back because we, we had spring break. So I was chatting with my son on the way I mentioned he plays university soccer. He was in the transfer portal for two months, and I spoke to him today. I said, what are you doing? Because he had a couple. He says, I'm staying. I'm not leaving. So I'm thankful. It's so, you know what? You, you don't realize how stressful that shit is. It's such this curse. That's, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, as a parent, you're like, you just hope somebody wants, you know, someone wants your kid. So at least his university coach is like, I don't want you to leave. So eventually, I guess he convinced him to say, you know. I've said a lot worse than the S-bomb on air, so I'll oh. get away with that one. <laughs> uh -oh. So we got about 30 seconds left. We're almost there. Oh. No, no props. We haven't seen anyone working with any props yet. Did you watch the dunk competition, the NBA dunk competition? Oh, um, no, year? I didn't. It was terrible. You didn't miss it. Oh. All I remember is seeing, I think, Jalen Brown jumping over someone who was sitting on a chair. Yeah. Which is, that's not impressive. I'm a, I'm a fat old man. I could jump over sitting on a chair. <laughs> All right, here we go. So our judges, it looks like Gus Jimenopoulos, Mark Bain from Nike, and then Jesse Tipping, who runs the All-Canadian Week. All right, it's showtime, folks. Welcome to the 2024 All-Canadian Week Slam Dunk Contest. Chris McKee with Afosa Oliogu. This is the one of the headline events, obviously, right. so with the main game tomorrow. There's nothing worse than like watching someone struggle to complete a dunk like nine times. Yeah. It's painful. No, but it gets draining because I've been in this for the last two years. I just decided not to do it this year. But yeah. like, it gets tired. Like you get tired. You don't want to jump no more. Yeah, you were in it last year. Yeah, I yeah, was. Yeah. You, were still, you were in it when you were like 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old are you now? I'm about to turn 18. 18, yeah. When's your birthday? In, a, in like a week or so. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is, but I'm digging the dude in the green outfit. Oh, yeah, I can't, I can't see from that far, so I, I actually don't know who that is. All right, here we go. What time is it? Six o'clock local time, so we're actually not too bad. Judge one, we got Gus Jimonopoulos. Well, there's Gus Jimonopoulos. He's the, the oh, okay. I remember. I remember. I remember. He's the chair of the All Canadian Committee. And Mark Bain from Nike, obviously, Nike a key sponsor for All Canadian Week. I'm rocking my Nike All Canadian shirt right now. And then Jesse Tipping. Oh, he's the president or CEO, whatever you want to call it, of All Canadian Week. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, our first dunker is a six foot ten power forward from Winnipeg, Manitoba. So here's here's Ramogi Nayagundi. Whoa, they haven't done a six ten. He's from DME Academy in Wisconsin, originally from Winnipeg. He's a class of 2025. He's been a part of Team Canada. 
He said both of his parents uh, played hoops. His dad up to the college level in Kenya. So this is a guy, because he plays in the U.S., I don't get to see too much of him. Here's his first go. Oh, that was nasty. I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking about a nine. What do you think? Seven and a half. Oh, there's no half, is there? I got an eight. I'm going nine on that. Let's see. So there we go. We got two eights and a nine. So that's not bad. I like that he got a first crack. You got to give him some, some credit for that. So here's Josiah. So here's Josiah Francis. Again, one of the favorites. This is my pick to get it done. This is my pick too. So Ofoso and I are in agreement here. He's the best in-game dunker I've seen in this gym in seven years. Hope, let's hope he lives up to it. A bad between the legs. Two hands. And two hands. Come on, give him a 10. The crowd not too impressed with that, though. Judges, scores. They got the 10s on the board. So they're on the, we're going nine, nine, eight, nine. So that's not bad. So that should be good enough to get him through. So each guy's gonna get two dunks. So it's combined score, I would imagine, from two dunks. Here's Sean Blake, the Vermont commit from Royal Crown. Back-to-back -back OSBA champ. See, I, look, I love Sean as a player. I don't know what his dunking capability is. I'm pretty sure he can East Bay, though, from what I remember. There's Blake now. Between the legs, tosses it. Oh! Well, that was impressive. It just didn't drop. Well, now we know it's coming. So he, he throws it between the legs, and he catches it himself. Up. Oh, my God. That's nasty. Second time. That's not too bad. You can get away on a second chance. Oh, we got some tens. We got ten and two, and two nines. Twenty-eight. So Sean Blake, he's pretty much assured himself a spot in the next round with that. Well, here now, the lone female contestant, Toby Fournier. This is the third time she's competed in this dunk competition. And so she's got Jasmine Bosco, the Villanova commit, helping her out. Off the backboard. Nope. Oh. Toss wasn't there. So I know they've been working on it. Jasmine said they've been working on this for a couple days. Between the legs, up. Oh, wow. Oh, that was nasty. <laughs> Two-handed as well and clean. I was going to get some tens. What do we got? Nine. Ooh. They're tough. You know, in years past, they were just given to the tens. So it looks like they're, they're holding their standard this year. So I got to interview Toby's dad a couple weeks ago at OSBA Championships. I said, when did you know Toby was a little different than some of the other kids? He said, they went to this AAU tournament in Kentucky when she was 13, and there was 80 basketball courts. Have you ever been to this place? There was 80 courts. And she said, he said that everyone after that, all like at all 80 courts, all they were talking about was my daughter at age 13, and they knew she was kind of different. So here's Chris Kumu from Fort Erie. Ooh. So Chris is one of the craziest verticals you'll ever see. He's definitely going to have a shout to win this. He's just electric. Kumu from Montreal. Oh. Oh, my goodness. You see how high he gets up, man. One more, Chris. I don't think I've seen that before. Yeah. Roll 
reverse. Oh, and the hang on. My goodness. Chris Kumu. I mean, the dude is, he's just freakish, man. So a 3 nines, 27. So right now, Kumu will be in second behind Sean Blake. Well, Tristan Beckford plays down at Hillcrest Prep. He's a class of 2025. He's got interest from Arizona State, Oregon, Seton Hall, Clemson, Boise. He took a visit to Grand Canyon. Ooh! Almost just kind of suspended in the windmill. That was nasty, man. Like his head was way above that rim. So nice. 27. Is that Beckford, yeah. And here's Jalik. Here's last year's champ. So spoke to Jalik yesterday. He said he's more interested in the, the game MVP tomorrow than this. He says, I already got my dunk championship, but I mean, this dude is just unbelievable. Spin. Oh! Shout out to his brother, Janai. Hopefully he's out there watching. Oh. So Jalik, 0 for 2. He's got lots of time. Was he stopping? That's it? You're just doing the two? So Jalik with a zero. They're just ran everyone 27. Yeah. So everyone 27, so we're gonna have more in the next round. Little Mo Bamba. So right now, Sean Blake leads at 28. I thought everyone's supposed to get two dunks. So wouldn't we start again at the beginning? I think so. Well, Chris McKee with a Fosa Oliogu, 2024. All Canadian slam dunk competition. Slam dunk competition, excuse me. Yeah, it is. Here's, so here's dunk two. So it'll be a combined score. So Ramogi Nayagudi. He's got an offer from Maryland, interest from Tennessee, What's that? What's Wyoming, that? Yale, Princeton. Eastern Michigan, a bunch of others. Some Ivy League in there as well. Oh, he's trying to go left hand. You see the power on that? The ball is bounced a little bit of half court. Come on, y'all, make some noise. Y'all, make some noise. Y'all, let's go. Reverse and then hammers it down with a left hand. So the fans not too into. Ramogi. All right, judges, what are your scores? You know, that's when, when the guys come from, you know, the Manitoba, they're not getting the hometown love. Scored a final score of 49. Next up, we have a six foot eight small forward from Scarborough, Ontario. He's committed to the Brian Jenkins University. Joe Joker. So here's Josiah Francis. Bro, I need him to like jump from the free throw line or something. Well, he said he might pull that out. But he's got to have to take a longer run than that. Oh. I'm choking off air. Well, that was nasty. I like that. Where are we going here? Two nines and an eight. Dang. So Josiah 52. That's pretty good. So 
So here's Blake, he's your leader. He had 28 in the first round. Oh, he's, he's bringing, who's that, Mariel Lacuntak. So Mariel goes 6'11". So it looks he, like he's gonna jump him. Oh my goodness. No, nah, man, lo, let's go get Olivier. I wanna see him out here. He's sitting right here. Oh, is he? Oh, he's down there, right yeah. There. Taking up six rows. Are you guys ready for this one? Put your hands together, you ready for this? Come on, get up, get up, get up. So Sean Blake's gonna try to jump the 6'11". Mariela Kuntok, who was the OSBA Defensive Player of the Year, Fort Erie star. Oh, and he just did it. So Sean Blake, I mean, hey, he's going to have a shout for the title here. That's going to get some nines and tens. Nine, nine, three nines. For Sean Blake. So Sean Blake, your leader at 55. Josiah Francis, 52. So Toby Fournier. Behind the back and two-handed. Oh, I like that. That's not easy. Let's see, will it impress the judges? We got some nines up there I can see. We got a little bit of sneak preview. Nine. So Toby at 53, so Toby's in second overall. Ladies and gentlemen, next up we have a six foot three guard from Montreal, Quebec. So what's gonna happen is the three with the highest score will then go to another round. So lots more dunks. Here's Chris Kumu again. In Fort Erie. Kumu of 2025. He's got an offer from Arizona State. I think George Mason in the mix as well. Kumu. Oh, oh my goodness. 360, but no. Second try for Kumu. Oh. He needs to get closer to the rim. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's starting way too far. Yeah, no, he's way too far out. Way exactly, far. yeah. One more, hurry up, go, go. Oh, there we go. So I think that's going to hurt him, the fact that he took a couple cracks at it. So that could cost Kumu a chance in the next round. Oh, they were cruel to him. So that's Kumu out now. There's Tristan Beckford. Oh, who's he jumping over? Nobody says they're from Maple. You're from Vaughn. Yeah, Vaughn. <laughs> Who's this coming out? I can't see. Oh, he's going to do the oh, jump up, rip the ball off. So how tall is Tristan? Cause, cause he's like 6'7". Because that dude who's holding the ball is pretty tall as well then. Yeah. So he's gonna try to rip this ball off him and then. I think he's gonna go through the legs. Yeah. Oh. He got it clean. He just didn't throw it down right. You know what we need that um the, the dunk competition, they had the LED floor. Oh. And so it was all like different images on the floor. It's crazy. Oh, he's just not grabbing it clean. So he's got 25 seconds, he's got lots of time here, but you wonder if he's wearing himself out. Oh, windy. 
Ooh. Just went over top of him this time. Didn't want to rip it off him. I think this is going to get some eights and nines. For a final score for the round of 53. So 53. So he's through. Maybe. So here's Jalik. So yeah, Sean Blake at 55, Tristan at 53, Toby at 53, and Josiah at 52. So Jalik. Just a different variation of the dunk Tristan just did, where he's gonna try to grab it. It looks gonna go 360. Oh, oh my god. I was gonna say, because Jalik's right-handed, there's no way he's gonna grab it. Yeah. If he does this, my goodness. Oh, one more. Lots of time. He's still got 40 seconds left. Well, they're just going to do off the backboard. No. Nope. I don't know why he gave up on it. It's like, because if he gets it, it's it's a 10. No. One more. I think he's just going to try to do something, get some points in. Hurry up, man. Jalik, I don't know if he knows about the time. Eight, seven. I don't think he knows about the time. There we go. Nah. So Jalik will not repeat. As the slam dunk champ, we're going to have a new slam dunk champ in 2024. Judges scores, we've got a triple seven for a final score of 48 for Julian. In the lead right now, but then we're going to have another round. So that's it. Yeah. So it should be three dunkers in. So it's going to be Sean, Tristan Beckford, and then Toby Fournier. Back in blood, Pooh yeah. Is he still locked up? He is. Well, free Pooh Yeah, no, his, his music is good. They need to free my dog. Yeah. All right, so let's put our hands together. Put your hands together, guys. Put your hands together, guys. You know, we talked about his ego. He says, I don't need no security in the club. I saw, I was at a club in Toronto a couple years ago, and I was standing next to Drake. He had 24 security guards with him in Toronto. Yeah, no, they have to, though. They need to. We have Not Pooh Shiesty. He don't need it. We have Tristan. Josiah Tristan. We got and Toby. Toby. And then Sean Blake. And we got Sean. So, up first, Josiah, let's get to it. Here we go. Bro, so, he need, bro, he needs to jump from the, the free throw line. Yeah, he said he might he might pull it out. So it looks like, yeah, he's going to get his run in. So he's going from the free throw line here. So Michael Jordan made this dunk famous. Matthew Alexander Moncrief tried this a couple years ago and couldn't get it. What was the MA down in Georgia right now? Francis is going to go from the free throw line. Oh, he's, he's going further. He's got a full sprint, full court. Just before the free throw line. Oh, he was about a, a shoe size in front of the free throw line. I don't think he needs to dribble. I think he should just sprint. You know what I mean? Yeah, full speed. He's still dribbling. No, way inside the free throw. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He was about 18 inches in front of the free throw line, so I'm not giving him the free throw line dunk. Oh, he's up. Judge scores? I love the MC using the R. Kelly lyrics. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even realize. He was like, I believe I can fly. Yeah. Up next, we have Tristan Beckford. I didn't even see the scores he gave there. He got 27 altogether. He did? Okay. Yeah. So three nines. A 
was the Central C. What do you think of the British rap? It has a good, it has a good like a, a good vibe to it. All right, here's Beckford. Oh, he's going bounce and then trying to go between the legs. I like that freestyle. It's Central C and Drake have a freestyle. Yeah, they do. I like that one. Oh my goodness. That's gotta be tense. It's gotta be tense. He said, calm down, now that's too easy. Judge the scores? You got a 10, 8, 9. A 10 and 8 and 9. You wanna talk about, you know, discrepancy between the judges. An 8, 9, and a 10. You don't see that too often. Up next, we've got Toby. So let's see how deep Toby can go into the bag of tricks. She was the co-champ, what, two years ago with Mambara Mara. Yeah. Fournier, two-handed dunk. That's too easy. Her first dunk was the best. She was That was unbelievable. You know, I was doing the OSB Championship Cups a week, and Toby had a wide open lane, and the, G the Pan Am Center was sold out, and everyone was like, yeah, and she just went with a lane. And I, you could just hear this, this giant sigh in the uh. audience. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever even hear the crowd when you're out there? No. I never do. Never? I feel like, like maybe specific things, but for the most part, like, I'm, I'm always locked in, so I'm not paying attention to, like, the noise. Oh, they're doing the, I hate this, because they never get the toss off the backboard. So he's got, who's that, Elijah Duvall, trying to help out with the toss off the backboard, Orangeville guard with Tristan, or sorry, with Sean Blake, excuse me. Sean was the leader after the first two dunks. See what I'm saying? You can yeah. never get the toss off the backboard, it drives me insane. Because they do this in the NBA dunk, and they can never get it. Ooh. They got to switch it up because you're not going to get the toss again. Yeah, I think he's going to leave it alone. So he's got 30 seconds. He should do what he did earlier when he threw it between the legs, throw it up, but he's bait this time. Uh, so it looks like Sean's ran out of gas here. It's taxing, you know, trying to jump that high with that kind of explosiveness. He's got four seconds left. And nope. So Sean Blake will not win. So it looks like Tristan Beckford. All right, judges, what are your scores, judges? Josiah Francis. So it's Josiah and Sean? No, I mean Josiah and Justin Beckford? Yeah. So I think he's going to go 360 between the legs, my guess. I think he's going to go like under like this and two hands backwards. Ooh, uh oh, oh, he's trying to go reverse pump. Man. He's just trying to go under both legs. That's like one of the hardest ones, but yeah, that's like. There's Josiah Francis headed to Fairleigh Dickinson. Keep in mind, folks, this guy's only been playing organized basketball since he was like 15. So, I mean, the ceiling on this guy, he's nowhere near what he could be. He's also going to be joined by, was it Chidube Equimato out of Fort Erie? He's going to go to FDU. Well, it's a good dunk. I don't know if that's going to win it for him. We're gonna go some eights. All right, so the judge, 
So right now, this is Tristan's to lose. If he wants it here, he can win the dunk competition. Score to beat right now is 52. So Tristan, his... Oh, he's trying to... He was just trying to call Olivier. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, he pointed over here. I was about to yeah. say. He better cut that out. <laughs> he's going to get a coon. Well, we've already seen him, someone jump Mariel. So Tristan's Hillcrest prep went 32 and 4 this year. Not a bad record. We did. I heard Tristan Beckford trying to jump Mary Lacuntak. And oh, and he does the Vince Carter put the whole put the whole arm in the rim. We'll cue the Roddy Rich. Wow. Well, that was a dunk made famous by Vince. So the final score for Tristan is 56. Yeah. So that's Tristan's going to win the dunk competition. Up next. No, they're going again? So she's got Kumu out to help out. No, too early. No, I think they're just trying to test it out, though. Oh, so she didn't get it clean. So we'll see if the judges, if that affects their decision. We got three eights. So Toby will not get another dunk title. He had a co-title. No one's clapping. So who's he calling out? Is it Mario again? Again? Oh, it's both of them. Who's that with him? Oh, I, I can't see from this far. Uh, I can't see. I don't know. You wear glasses? I do wear glasses. Yeah. I, I don't have my contacts in right now. I'm the same. I can't even see yeah. there. At least I got my glasses on. You ever, get, you ever think about that, that LASIK eye surgery? I haven't. No? What is that? Well, you can correct that. Oh. Look into it. No, I don't. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't trust it. No. I feel like it will make my eyes worse than it already is. Hmm. Look into it. Well, here's Sean Blake. He's going to try to jump over to this Mary Lacuntak and someone else who probably goes a good 6'9". Oh, oh. They were too far out because he jumped them clean, but they were just too far out. My goodness. You know, I didn't know Sean had those kind of hops, man. There's Blake. Oh, and then he hangs on. Sean Blake. He was holding his hammy after that. He's all right, though. That's going to get some nines, I think. All right, judges. Sports up, judges. I feel like if I were to stand, I don't think the, the camera would see me, would it? Ooh, two tens and a nine. Oh, score of 50 for Sean Blake. Put your hands together, y'all, for Sean Blake. Put your hands together. Well, this is always a blast being a part of this. Of course, if you're out there, don't forget, drop a follow on the All Canadian Instagram, Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, at this time, we will be announcing the winners for Facebook. the Slam Dunk competition. So it's got to be Tristan Beckford. You know, you had a great show tonight, everybody. Thank you all for coming out and supporting these games. Put your hands together for all the All-Stars here tonight.
it's Tristan Beckford. It's got to be. What do you think they got to do to fix the NBA slam dunk champion? I mean, is money even motivation to those dudes? Like, Probably not. I just feel like, I think it was the, what, the 2016 dunk contest? I feel like that just set, like, the, the standards for, like, the best. The one that was in Toronto. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. feel like what everyone else is seeing, they're probably just like, oh, like, you know, we've seen better, so it's not, it's not good no more. Yeah, that's kind of, it, it has. You know, one of the things I think they should do is get, like, a huge, like, five, ten million prize for charity. So the players of their charity of their choice. Yeah. Because I mean, now you're helping people. You know what I mean? Ten million bucks can help a lot of people. So I think that would be motivation to get some of the, the bigger names to kind of get involved. Yeah. There's got to be a sponsor out there willing to scratch a check for like five, ten mil. They do it for all those college bowl games. You know what I mean? Oh, they do. Yeah, that's what that's why it's everything's like the Pop Tart Bowl, the Tostitos Bowl, like, you know. And they're all paying huge money to, to get that sponsor, so. Well, Toby, obviously the girls' champ, the only contestant in it. We saw Agat McKeer yesterday. She can dunk. The two Crestwood teammates. That would have been fun. Yeah. And then Tristan should be the champ. I think they got to shorten it. You know I mean? They keep going because the, the contestants, you get too gassed because the best dunk's usually the first round and then it kind of tails off because the, the, just the legs are tired. Yeah. And then are we doing the men's presentation here? He's got all the girls up there. Well, there you go. You, you made it through your first broadcast. How would you rate yourself? Ah, uh, it's a little much for me, but I think I did pretty good. Maybe yeah, a seven out of ten. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did well. I'll tell you the worst, because I always get a bunch of different players, even just to call games. When I did the Orangeville games for years, the, the, and, I, and I love the kid, but the worst ever was Tyree Samuel. Yeah. Because he came up and he was like just on his phone, wasn't even paying attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'd ask him a question, he'd be like, "What? Huh? Oh. But I love Tyrese. And so now here we're going to do the presentation for the men's. So, yeah. I got you. The Ifosa's getting selfies. The young fans coming up. So how, how have you been getting used to that? Kind of just a little bit of fame. You know, it's obviously going to get, it's only going to increase. So, well, I feel like just me as a person once again. I feel like just me, once again, I feel like I'm very, you know, I'm not really social. So I feel like when, you know, when people come up to me, like obviously I still take the picture, but you know, sometimes it's just like, oh, like this is real, like this is actually happening. But yeah, no, it's definitely grateful, because I feel like I was once at that, you know, moment where I wanted to take a picture with someone, so. Keep that in mind when you get older. So there's Tristan Beckford, your 2024 All-Canadian Slam Dunk Champ. Well, Fosa, hey man, can't thank you enough for doing this, really appreciate it. Thank you, and, thank you for uh, me. Thank you. I'll be rooting for you wherever you land next season in you know, 2025 and uh, go knock them dead down there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Respect, my man. Cheers. <laughs> 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 <laughs>